With 2024 right around the corner, this week is the very last purchase of 2023 that we are going to see in the investment portfolio, which brings our seven week average to $7,000 invested. Remember, we are putting $1,000 in every single week. We're going to check out that portfolio in just a minute, guys. But what is 2024 going to bring? Overall, people are saying it is going to be a massive year. Now, if the Fed Reserve Chair Jerome Powell can pull off our soft landing, will the stocks continue to rally? Will cryptocurrency really be back with Bitcoin and the ETFs that we know are coming into 2024? In addition, guys, who is going to be the next president is going to be all the things to really keep in mind. Now, of course, this is a time to reevaluate your risk levels and the allocations of where you have everything. 2024, a cooling job market, high interest rates are still there, elevated inflation, really time to take a look at your portfolio. Make sure you have it set for 2024 and where those investments are going to be. Overall, everything that I've read from Bloomberg to Forbes um, to CNBC have said stay invested. Now, the only part of the investment portfolio of what you want to put into the market is something that you're willing to invest for about three to five years. Now, that is really the return on investment, guys. You want to see over a couple years. Now, for most of us that are in the market for an incredible long time, actually from the time that you can contribute into the time of retirement, you will see the compounding interest. Now, as the Fed continues to cut interest rates, and they're talking roughly three interest rates cuts going into 2024, which means it is going to help us out a lot when it comes to the market. As soon as rates start coming down, CD rates start coming down, the um, bond yield starts returning to a normal level. We're going to see a lot of money flow back into the stock market. But in my opinion, guys, we're going to see a lot of money go back into um, not only the stock market, but also the crypto markets, which, of course, with next year and the Bitcoin having, we're going to have to see exactly what it does. In addition to the ETFs, I think personally that next year is going to be a very, very big year for Bitcoin. Because of that, I am roughly putting 8 to 10 percent of the portfolio that we see here. When the ETF is out, I'm going to invest it. Now, I'm not actually going to put it into Bitcoin. I, I'm considering that right now, but I think overall I'm going to go ahead and put it into um, the ETF when it is available, when it is approved, which again, the speculation is saying that it is going to be January 4th. Now, also with this, guys, keep some cash on the side. If there is a big market dip, I know really timing the market versus time in the market makes a big difference. If you're not dollar cost averaging, have a little bit of money on the sideline just in case what goes happen and if things go crazy, guys. And also rethink crypto. Again, with the ETFs that are going to be coming out, they are my absolute favorite, guys. Bitcoin ETF should finally be released in 2024 making it super easy for not only institutional investors to invest in Bitcoin, but also for the average individual to invest in Bitcoin as well, which again is going to be super interesting to see what we get. So let's hop over guys. We're gonna go ahead and check out the portfolio, take a look at it and break it down. So let's take a look at it. All right guys, so here we continue our debt-free journey. As you can see, our value is just south of 82K. So we are kind of making some crazy progression in just over two years with this portfolio. But you can see the gains, all-time gains, a little over 11,000. All-time return, 46.65% in two years. Now, this is super interesting, guys, and this is actually something that I want to look at because if you remember, even going back to the beginning of this, I have been doing dollar cost averaging for an incredible amount of time, which meant 2022 was a really bad year for the stock market, but we still invested all the way down. This is where a lot of people would drop out of the investing cycle. They would cash out a lot of the stocks, which drove the stock market down further and further. Now, I really use the mentality of dollar cost averaging. And I also use the mentality is when stocks are discounted or when the stock market is down, especially as significantly as 2022. For me, I put that in a position as that is one of the absolute biggest buy buying opportunities that we see is when the stock market's running a 20, 25% sale or discount, depending on the way you look at it. So again, then when the market recovered going into 2023, it has been and done incredibly well. Even looking again, we've been seven weeks in this. So even looking at the last week, guys, um, down here, you can see we've had a little bit of a market gain overall. But then when you get into a month, you can see we're up about 5%, the money weighted return. Market gains about 3,400. We did get some dividends in there. And we still do have some other dividends that are coming in from our portfolio. But even looking at this year, guys, we're looking at a 27% this year, which is kind of crazy, guys, because we are almost done 
with 2023. And that is a very, very solid return, even cashed in almost $1,000 in dividends, which I know changing up the portfolio mid-year, this is gonna be a huge factor next year as we continue to add more to this portfolio. And I wanna run it for an entire year, guy. That is my plan, that we're gonna run this for a year. And as you can see, the percentages or our pie weights have kind of leveled out a little bit. Now, again, when the Bitcoin ETF comes out, I am, am gonna put some over there. So we're gonna reallocate this. And at that time, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm gonna rebalance the portfolio that I have, um, making sure that we get everything all set. Now, what makes up the portfolio that we have here for the debt-free journey? If you've been following it for almost two months, guys, this is the build out. And let's go back to our um, all-time numbers. So we have the VOO. Now that, of course, is the Vanguard S&P 500 fund. That is where a majority of what we have is weighted. You can see, guys, even the return is around 45% with over $10,000 that we've gained as a return in there. And the percentage for that used to be 100 as we continue putting more money into this portfolio, it is actually being allocated to these bottom three, which is made up of the SCHD or the Schwab US Dividend Equity Fund. Um, that is really important because that is the dividend. That is my staple. Um, that is the one that when we continue to grow that, not only have you seen it's grown about an 8% rate there in value, but also the dividend yield that we're getting from this makes a big difference on how well this is performing. And of course, the Vanguard S&P 500 is the 500 largest companies within the United States. Now, then we have the QQQM, which is the Invesco, the NASDAQ, so that um, NASDAQ 100 ETF. Again, I know some of these do overlap in a couple different ways, but overall, they do carry some of these smaller caps um, or some of the somewhat smaller companies um, that might not be weighted as heavy, but does kind of still have some of that overlap. And then of course we have the growth fund guys. And as you can see between the S&P 500 and the growth fund, I mean the growth fund's over 43%, which is kind of amazing to see. I feel like if I would have stayed in this growth fund, especially looking at 2023, this would be much, much higher guys. For a majority of this portfolio, I did only carry the Vanguard S&P 500. On the advice of Warren Buffett, which we know is one of the biggest, probably the, the biggest single most, um, invested individual when it comes to Berkshire Hathaway, which is kind of crazy, but he said everyone should own the VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500, and it is brings very, very true, guys. Literally, with dollar cost averaging, that has made the big difference here because, again, I kept buying it when it was going down and going down and going down. Um, every two weeks, we were actually putting money into the Vanguard to the VOO um, every two weeks and just continued to build this portfolio. Now, like I said before, is we are going to probably allocate 8 to 10% of this when and if M1 Finance starts carrying that Bitcoin ETF, which we do want to see. As of right now, guys, I do not hold any individual Bitcoin at this point, but I know it's been fluctuating about a 42 to 45K mark, which means that when institutional investors get into it, I feel like the price of Bitcoin is just going to spike. The video that I did a little bit earlier on um, the Bitcoin ETFs, the ease of the av availability and also financial institutions or institutional investors that are going to be investing in Bitcoin are going to make and have a really, really big impact. Now, overall with this, guys, we haven't again been borrowing any money. We've actually made enough through YouTube and a couple other revenue sources that we're able to cover what we have been putting in here. And the funding history right here, guys, we have put 45K into this this year alone. You can see from the 25, which we started this in 2021, small deposit there, we stepped it up here. 45 is what we're looking for, and that is what we are going to end this year with, guys. So pretty good to put our 45K in there. Now, of course, if we're looking to do this a full 52, we're about $7,000 short. We might have to borrow at some point if we can't make up the difference, but due to that, I have cut a majority of expenses that I have in, in their entirety, making sure that we can do the debt-free journey and make sure we're following this, guys. And I'm using a majority, I, I mean, since we are almost entirely debt-free at this point, short of a mortgage, we have been pushing a lot more into the investment accounts to really build it up before retirement. So looking at the spreadsheet, this is also what we've kind of followed, guys. So you can see the margin trading or what we have done with the trading, deposits at 1226, which is today, already put the money in the market, Is it is invested. We started this, I mean, what's that? Seven weeks ago, we were at about a 22% return. 
With the returns in the last couple of weeks that we have been doing amazing, we're at a 46.65. Net cash flow goes from 65 to 71. And then of course the market gain was at 4,300, just broke 11,000 as we've seen over on M1 Finance. Dividends, of course, we had a little bump right here with the SCHD. And then some of the larger dividends came in right here. Now it is also showing us um, the earned dividends or the ex-dividend date that we have crossed but we haven't got paid for those dividends as of yet. The payout has not been received, but it is showing because we owned it on that X dividend date that it is there, guys. So we're gonna have another couple hundred dollars go into the market, and that is from that VOO, bringing our balance right there to 81. And the balance difference, and this is doing week to week. So if you look at the formula up here, guys, I kind of have the balance difference in the week to week. I minus out the thousand that we put in there, guys. So these were two monster weeks of actual performance, guys. You can see the 633, 707, week to week to week. Last two weeks of this were monster performance. Now, as we get into January of 2024, again, there are gonna be a lot of things to really keep an eye on, um, including how the market is, how the retail sales come in, which I think overall, they're gonna be up considerably. And then of course, we've been tracking the actual value that we have in there, going from five to almost $10,000. So almost a $5,000 gain in the past seven weeks with the VOO, you can see QQQM. Now these are not the actual gains. This is the, the amount or the value that they have increased, which I'll show you what I'm tracking right here because I was not tracking the percentage guys, but we're actually tracking right here the, the gains that we have seen. So right there, 10.5 um, is what we're tracking, the 3, 369, the 230 and the 1636. So definitely seeing some pretty decent gains in here. The VUG, again, a little bit slower, but the VOO has been on fire. And then a lot of them, guys, the SCHD for the value. As we continue to put more in there, um, it's really made a difference to, to the growth factor that we do and see. So all right, guys, so that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.